it won't be long now before there are gifts piling up under the tree and the big day arrives. How does that work in your house? Do you all just go for it? Or does someone hand out one parcel at a time? And what do you do when you get a gift to unwrap? You dive in and rip off the paper and instantly find out what it is. Or are you one of those people who unsticks the tape and carefully folds up the paper? In our house, there are very few rules, but saying thank you is important. And to do that, you have to be careful enough to keep the label so that you know who the gift is from. Parcels tend to be opened one at a time with everybody enjoying each moment together. I sometimes pick up a book and inside the front cover will find a Christmas label reminding me of who the book came from in the first place. There are some interesting gifts that are addressed to everyone and those get passed around and we all dip in. Hilary likes the caramel ones well, I usually pick something with nuts. Or toffee. <laughs> Long ago, I didn't ever choose the ones with raspberry or orange flavour, but these days, I'll dip in and see what I get. I know I can always go back for more later. Well, reading the Bible is a bit like the way we unwrap gifts. Some people like to dive in and wallow, like Sparky when it snows. He goes outside and dives in and rolls around and tries to eat it. All of it. <laughs> Silly dog. Others like to go systematically through everything, one phrase at a time, carefully dissecting every nuance and flavour. People who are new to reading sometimes dive in and haven't got a clue where to start and end up on one of those lists of whose grandfather were related to each other or something. Just like with presents under the tree, there are only a couple of things you really need to know. Who's it for and who's it from? Oh, okay. So if it's one of those strange gifts from a distant aunt, you might need to read the instructions, work out what it actually is or who it's really for. But other than that, it's not hard. Me? Well, over the years, I've gotten to know my way around the Bible well enough to just enjoy digging in. Well, here and there. But I love the idea of the chocolates too. Sometimes I'm looking for the big purple one with the lovely hazelnut, but sometimes I just pick something and enjoy the surprise. And I can always go back later for more if I want to. In case you've forgotten how to dive into snow or you might be afraid of getting stuck with a list of boring names like a relative at dinner who just won't be quiet. I'll give you a couple of tips about reading the Bible in case you want to do that over the holidays. Oh, first, don't get all bent out of shape that I said holidays and not Christmas. Holidays just includes many more days. I'm not ignoring Christmas. I'm including New Year and beyond. You don't want a gift that doesn't last, now do you? Second, don't think you have to do it all at once. There's plenty there for everyone and it isn't going to run out. Not before you try it. Just a couple of sentences and you can chew on it for a while, like a good toffee. A couple of rules, just as with presents. Keep the label. Remember who it's from and who it's for. It's okay to dive in and just about anywhere, but you might want to start off with something that makes some sense. Those complicated lists are interesting, but you have to kind of develop your curiosity, like a good mystery story or something. Some people will tell you to start with John or something because they're afraid you're going to miss the good bits. But really, if you ask me, digging around in the middle, say Psalm 119 is a 
good as places anywhere to start. The psalm is broken down into bite-sized chunks and they all have enough in them to make you think for a minute or two. If you think love God and love people whenever it says rules or instructions or laws, you won't go far wrong either. Go on, give it a go. The first chunk of Psalm 119 starts off with joyful are people of integrity and that same section ends with please don't give up on me see what I mean nothing too heavy and a couple of good thoughts to get your day started <laughs> now once you've exhausted the good bits there in Psalm 119 I'm more than happy to point you at another chunk or two to encourage your day. But by then, you'll probably have found out there are 150 of those psalms and just reading those will take you a while. Get yourself a good, easy-to-read Bible too. It's been around a long time and some of the ways of saying things are sometimes a little weird. In these videos, I usually use the New Living Translation, but use whatever you're comfortable with. Now, which one shall I choose? Hmm. That one looks like it needs trying. Until tomorrow, goodbye.